Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of the Hateful Truth video game review series where I give you maximum truth and minimum bullshit regarding the latest video game releases. Now, this episode is the very first time I'm doing something like this. I want to preface this review <clears throat> by basically saying, listen, this is a mini review for the first episode of a five-part episodic game, alright? I didn't do this last year when I did uh, when I played Heavy Rain, not Heavy Rain, oh my goodness, when I played The Walking Dead, because I wanted to wait till the end to review it. However, that kind of left a big gap, because during the course of the year, people were asking me, gee, Phil, is this game good? What do you think? And I never really had a central area where I could say, oh yeah, by the way, here's my feelings on the game. So what I've decided to do this year is basically talk about every episode, what I think about it, whether or not I think it's good or not. Um, should I give it a score? I'm kind of bouncing that around in my head. Because, really, you can say, oh, episode one was great, but then if the, the story ends up sucking at the end of this whole game, you know, was it fair to give the first episode a good score? I don't know. Everyone else does it, by the way. They, every, every other media outlet seems to review these episodic games on a, every episode as if it's a separate game. So, we're going to talk about The Wolf Among Us. The Wolf Among Us is the latest game released by Telltale Games. They're doing it very similarly to how they did The Walking Dead last year. Where you buy episode one... For five bucks, you play through it. If you like it, you can buy the season pass for episodes two through five, or you can buy them separately, but you save some money if you do get the season pass. They don't have a release schedule for episodes two through five. It's quite unfortunate, simply because I wish I knew when they were coming out so I could say, okay, I can plan out my gaming schedule. Telltale Games is terrible for that, okay? However, that being said, episode one was released on Xbox 360 and the PC this past Friday, which was the... 11th, the 11th of October 2013, should be released on PlayStation Network this coming Tuesday, the 15th, hopefully, all right? So, The Wolf Among Us, what the hell is it? Unlike The Walking Dead, The Wolf Among Us doesn't take up a very, you know, super popular, well-known piece of pop culture like The Walking Dead is because it has such a popular television show right now. The Wolf Among Us is a DC Comics, uh, Vertigo Comics storyline where basically what's happened is... All famous fairy tale and fable-like creatures have somehow been sucked out of their natural environments and placed in this place called Fable Town. It is a very uh, urban, city-like environment, okay? Uh, there is a magic called glamour that is put over this town that, so that these fable characters look human. So that normal humans, they run into them, they're not appalled, oh my god, there's a pig, there's a frog, there's, you know, all these crazy animals and stuff from fables. And, uh... <clears throat> It's interesting. It's an interesting take because all these characters from your favorite fables are now in this storyline. It's like a, almost a film noir, murder mystery kind of a deal. Very gritty, very uh, adult-oriented. Lots of foul language in this game. And uh, the graphical style is very similar to, say, The Walking Dead. It's the cell-shaded kind of a deal, but it's a lot more colorful, a lot more artistic, I'd say. It's not It's not gritty or... or, or uh, how do I want to say? It's not... The Walking Dead was, like, very realistic in, in the way it looked, you know, outdoors or whatever. Here it's, like, stylized color usage and stuff like that, okay? The game focuses around the main character, uh, who's the big bad wolf from, that's right, from several different uh, stories, fables, including Little Red Riding Hood, um, and also including uh, the Three Little Pigs, okay? So, the big bad wolf, in this game, goes by, for short, Bibs, I think it's Bisby. It's either Bisbee or Bigsby. Don't quote me on that. I, I screwed up there by not researching that. But uh, he goes for that by that for short. He's the sheriff of Fable Town. It's his job to keep law and order running in this city. Okay, and uh, it's funny because they say when this story opens up, there's never been a fable on fable murder before. Uh, and uh, the game actually opens up with the sheriff uh, re uh, responding to a domestic disturbance. Okay. He investigates, finds this girl who he thinks may be like a call girl. Later on, plot twist, she gets murdered. Now, that's the only spoiler I'm going to give you. You need to know that to understand the whole premise of the story. So, there's a murder. It leads to, a, you know, a series of killings. Basically, we're trying to figure out who is it. we got to get to the bottom of this. Who do you want to apprehend? Who's the suspect? Etc., etc., etc. Okay? So, <clears throat> it's interesting because it's very similar to the gameplay of... The Walking Dead. You're going to have different dialogue choices, all right, that you're going to have to choose 
And in certain situations, when you're investigating, you may be able to catch someone who's telling you bullshit, basically catch them in their own lie, and therefore call them out later on and say, no, that's not true because you said this or this. Maybe you'll you walk around and investigate. You find pieces of evidence which can help prove that something is true or something is false. And you can finally get the real story out of someone, okay? Um, the first episode, it first starts off slow, then all of a sudden picks up full speed, and, uh, you know, the whole time you're thinking, gee, what's really going on? Who's murdering who? Why are they murdering them? Uh, you know, there's never really explained because this is the beginning, you know, they're trying to get you latched onto this murder mystery. Um, you know, some big, big, uh, cliffhanger ending, definitely, big cliffhanger ending. Um, and during the course of this episode, you actually have to make some decisions. Uh, who do you go to first? You got a distress call from your, uh, someone who you know, one of the citizens, says that there's a, there's a disturbance, they need some help. Or you can go investigate something that you saw in a magic mirror. So you have a choice, which one do you want to go to first? And apparently, depending on which one you go to first, completely changes the outcome. Someone might survive, someone might die if you go to one or the other one first, all right? In addition, at the end of the episode, you have a choice. You have two suspects for these murders, and you need to choose which one are you going to apprehend. And depending on which one you apprehend, it could actually change the outcome of the episode, and probably further episodes as well. So very similar to The Walking Dead, where how you play it can actually determine what's going to happen and what's going to change in later episodes. Um, <clears throat> some people have already said they've replayed it multiple times and got completely different outcomes, and they're wondering how that's going to feed into the next game, all right? Um, I loved it. I thought the writing was good. It was very adult-oriented, by the way. A lot of swearing and stuff like that. Some gruesome content. It's not a game for kids. Definitely not, okay? Um, but for, like, a film noir style, again, this, this detective mystery kind of thing, it was great. It was like playing L.A. Noir combined with The Walking Dead. That's what I felt like I was playing, but it was weird because it had fairy tale characters in it too. So it really is a unique kind of combination of different factors from different kinds of gameplay, and I definitely thoroughly enjoyed the game. Um, it clocks in at about two hours long. It could be a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, depending on the choices that you make and how long you thoroughly investigate the crime scenes, okay? Now, <clears throat> all that being said, I understand this is only episode one of an episodic game. It could definitely change uh, in the future. Um, and therefore, I've decided I'm not going to give this a review score, per se. But what I'm going to say is for an episodic game, if I do a hateful truth of it, I'll either give it a thumbs up, thumbs down until the end of the game, and then I'll give it a real score. And that way you know, you know whether or not I'm really liking it. The answer is right now, yes. A thumbs up for episode one, which is called Faith. Uh, that's the actual name of the episode. Uh, for five bucks, you get over two hours worth of fun content and replayability because you want, might want to go back and replay it to actually see what happens with the different choices that you make. And uh, like I said, the, the actual, the visuals, the style, everything was well done. The voice acting is very good. In fact, the only real negative that I have may be because of the platform I purchased the game on. So to clarify this point, I purchased this game on the Xbox 360 because it was a lot easier to play on the Xbox 360 than to get it set up on my PC. Last time that I played a game on my PC <clears throat> like this, which was uh, the last episode of The Walking Dead 400 Days, there was a lot of graphical issues, and I don't know if that was because my PC needed a restart or something, but it was very choppy and it locked up a few times. So I said, you know what, let's just do it on Xbox 360. Well, to my dismay and chagrin, I had graphical issues. Unfortunately, there was a lot of uh, frame rate issues, some chopping up, some stuttering, uh, and I don't know if it's just this style of game, for whatever reason, can't run itself well. I don't know. It's very weird because there's nothing in the game. It's like it's not super high-res graphics. It's cell shaded for God's sake. So I don't know why when I'm playing these style of games I'm having problems. I've not had problems on the PC and on the Xbox 360. But that's really the only negative I had to say was that there were some graphical hiccups. Outside of that, the gameplay was fun. The dialogue choices were interesting. I really did feel that my choices affected what happened in the episode. Um, it's a great cl cliffhanger. There's a great mystery going on. Who is this killer? Why are they doing what they're doing? Again, like they said, there's never been a fable on fable kill before, murder. So the fact that this is happening, is it even a fable? Maybe it's a human. Who knows? Maybe a human found out that their fables is going around on like a murder spree. We don't know. But we have some clues. We have some suspects. For what it is, it's very entertaining. I enjoyed it. I give it a thumbs up. I'll continue to do these for every episode as they come out and let you know, you know, how it further progressed the story and whether or not 
uh, it's worth it checking out. For now, for five bucks for that amount of content and the beginning of a great story, it's a thumbs up. I will be purchasing the season pass and I will be checking out the other episodes in the future, okay? So that's it for this mini version of The Hateful Truth. I just want to get out there and talk a little bit about the game. I hope this gives you an idea whether or not you want to check it out yourself. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on The Hateful Truth.